I would say he was mischievous because you see the British, the British uh, aristocracy always looked down on people. Um, I think it must have been in the fall of 1955. We had a, he, he threw a dinner for, for Beaverbrook scholars in the. He was a dynamo, an absolute dynamo. His eyes were magnetic. He looked right through you. I remember that the, the wine seemed to flow pretty freely, which was kind of interesting because the alcohol was. Uh, was a no-no in residence there and indeed on campus. But he looked at me and he said, are you married? <laughs> I said, yes, your lordship, I'm married and I have three children. He said, good God, woman. <laughs> no, 150 of us paraded in front of Lord Beaverbrook, um, sitting in a rather high, large chair in the gym. Um, raised on a platform. One complaint he was weird, he shouldn't be wearing brown shoes and a black suit. I mean, silly stuff like that. But he was a lord who could live like a lord. They couldn't. And of course he had his bank accounts in Canada. But you could only take 25 pounds or something like that out of Britain after the war. But not so for Beaverbrook because he had his Canadian bank accounts here of him things for things, a lot of the things that he had done with. Uh, as we walked by, holding our mortarboards in our hands, uh, we knelt in front of him on a cushion, which was um, at least one step below him. I'm sure he enjoyed the sort of symbolism of putting, <coughs> of putting our mortarboards on us, he in a seated position and we kneeling at his feet. I'm sure he loved that, being a rather short man. In my experience, short men very like, are very much like to be uh, feel that they're taller than other people. And he was taller than all of us, even the gigantic boys of six foot three. He was so vital. And it was only six years later that he died. He was 79 then. But he was so full of life. <laughs>